girl. Hey! Not yet. Hey! One more. Hey! Good afternoon and salutations, Miss Mims. How is you? I am shook. Okay. <laughs> Wasn't ready for that. Go ahead. Tell me why are you shook. Because I have never seen somebody a RuPaul's Drag Race just give up in a lip sync. Oh, Someone who had the Ella, win. Ella, right? Ella, right? Yes. Oh, boy. We were both thinking, me, me and the husband were both like, uh, what's happening? <laughs> somebody, she had the win. Like, she had the win. And you could just see Ru watching that going, well, I can't give her the win. No, it was, no. it was like, what, I genuinely was concerned. I was like, does someone give her a horse tranquilizer? Like, what happened? Because it just, like, she just looked very much like, meh. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, Crystal yeah, Versace now, nailed it. When, when they finished the lip sync, I literally said, there's no, there's no question. There's, no, I, no, like no. it's not even a question who who is about to. And by the way, uh -huh. dear listeners, I don't know how many of you are 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 big fans of old music, but I don't know what possess Kitty Scott Claus to just rip off the skirt at the beginning of the song, as if like, well, how is that even appropriate for this kind of song? They 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 did Dusty Springfield. You don't own me, right? Yeah. Which how is, I, how is that even a what I was hoping that? that Kitty would get the two of them together at the back of the stage, do like the end part to First Wives Club, which would have been oh, that would have been so good. Poor, but poor Crystal would have not even understood the reference. No, she wouldn't have. I, Ella may <laughs> not have either, but I know Kitty would have. Well, I mean, Kitty would have, but like, I mean, I mean, if you think about poor Crystal, she didn't even know who Kathy Burke was, so that's true. Definitely not gonna know. That's absolutely true. So I have a quick news flash. Quick news, news flash. flash. News, news flash. News flash. I'm not wearing pants right now. Ooh. I know. I am wearing underwear, but I am not wearing pants. Well, I... just for the listeners to understand, uh, the Divine Mims is so hairy that you would probably not notice the difference. And it is the Divine Miss Mims. Please don't forget the Miss. Please don't forget the Miss. It is my full God-given name. The Divine Miss Mims. Your God given name? My God given name. Well, my God given name's you bitch, the divine Miss Mims. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> Weren't expecting that, were you, babe? I was not, actually. That was, uh, that was a <laughs> egg on my face. Definitely. Wouldn't be the first time. Last time it wasn't egg. Ew. Oh, I know, I know, I know. That was that was rude. That was well, very, very rude. Well out of hand. Well, well out, out of hand. hand. Just out of. So, how was your Thanksgiving suppers? Uh, suppers? It was... Did you not have more than one? I. I mean, I, I, I cook a lot, so I guess sure we have Thanksgiving multiple times after Thanksgiving because. I don't know how to make a small amount of food. Are you are you sick of it yet? No, it's cool. Okay. I like to alternate because I'm one of those people, right? Like I'm a person of color, so of course I love sides. So you know, you just switch up your sides each day, and everything's fine. That is not necessarily a person of color thing. I think that's just a southern thing. That's what the meme says. <laughs> what 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 meme? I thought the meme said you don't like mayonnaise. That's the that's the. <laughs> Wait, people of color don't like mayonnaise? What? Are Wait, you what? serious? You don't know that stereotype? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a stereotype. That is a very strong stereotype. I had no idea. Wait, yeah. so what do, what do people of color use? Mayonnaise. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. They also use too much mayonnaise. I don't know. I just know this is a stereotype. I, that's, I... Mayonnaise, just for FYI for everybody, um, if you are in an area that has a Publix... That's the reason your public subs taste so good is because they literally pile on so much mayonnaise. That's literally why. What? So, ye who are not really a Southerner, what is your brand of mayonnaise? Wait, you are not. What, I was born and raised in the same Southern town you were. I know, I know, but what is your brand of mayonnaise? 
That is not relevant. It is absolutely relevant, as there is only one. You're going to say Miracle Whip, and that shit ain't mad. I'm not going to say Miracle Whip. Thank God for that. No. um, Actually, no. My dad did like Miracle Whip, but I was not a Miracle Whip person. Okay. Fine. If I have to say, I do do prefer Hellman's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's some northern trash is what that is. It's Dukes, (laughs) y'all. I don't like Dukes. It's too sweet. It's, it's sour. Dukes isn't sweet. It's got that twang to it. Yeah, there's something weird about it. I don't like it. It's lemon. I Actually, I really am. I've I've lately, not lately, <laughs> lately, but the last few years, I've almost completely switched over to Koopy, uh mayonnaise <laughs> because I'm now really that's just that a bougie. I mean, Koopy's delicious. Don't get me wrong. It's so good. Well, I think. If I didn't have so many Asian markets near my house where it's easily accessible, I probably wouldn't have gotten so deeply involved with it. So last night we we had eaten like a lot of rich food this past week. Mm, yeah. So we we were looking for a snack, and we had a bag of Takis, but the Takis were a little bit too hot for us. So Mister Mims made a dip of sour cream and mayonnaise. End of list. <laughs> We don't need you to, to. I love that you said, we've been eating a lot of rich food for the last week. So our alternative was to dip Takis and sour cream and mayonnaise. And I'm going to need you to do that. <laughs> now, I, now, I have, I do like having um, spicy nacho Doritos. I do dip those in sour cream, actually. Yeah, yeah, I, but... But uh, you probably disagree. I have a controversial yet brave opinion. You ready for this? Cool Ranch Doritos mm. are trash. Whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I just them. can't. I just. They aren't good. They. Give me. They so good as a, as a taco shell. They were so good. Well, that's different. That's a taco shell. That's got shit. And I'm talking about you open the bag, you eat them. Right. Okay. Oh, but did you hear? There is some news on the Taco Bell front. Please. I don't know what it is, but... Uh, They're bringing back the Mexican pizza. Shut up. Please tell me you're kidding right <laughs> now. Please tell me you're kidding. Oh, don't break my heart like that. Please. I read it on Yahoo News a couple days ago. Oh, no. I can't handle It's my favorite thing there, and it's like, it's been so hard ever since it's been gone. My favorite thing is actually the spicy potato taco, which they did bring back. Oh, that thing is so good. I mean, I like that one okay, but the Mexican pizza has always just been like my, I just, I love it so much. Do you remember in Statesville, North Carolina, taco time? Yes. Okay, good. I I didn't know. I do remember it. That is the first place I ever had a a taco pizza like a taco pizza we used to get taco bell when was it we we used to get to before states a place we used to get it i think when we used to go down to charlotte um because there was a taco bell off of independence and um was was the taco was there a taco bell over by the mall in statesville uh no, there's only ever been one taco. Well, I mean, there might be a Taco Bell there now. No, there's not there now. I was I was thinking maybe there is there now. I don't there know. always was. There's always been the only Taco Bell that had ever been there was the one out by the Walmart. Okay. okay. And yes, dear listeners, I do call it the Walmart. Well, yeah, because there's only the one. There wasn't a Target or anything else. It was the Walmart on 21. Is there still? A, is there a Target now in Statesville? No, Hill? there's not a Target oh. now. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what? No. So we we being being. We made, we being the Divine Miss Mims, that bitch, um, made made a mistake this weekend. Oh no, are you pregnant? <laughs> no, not that kind of mistake. <laughs> On the Friday after Thanksgiving. So yesterday. Or the day before Two days ago. Okay. Um, we wanted to go get out of the house. So I was like, hey... You know what's really cute? Blowing Rock, North Carolina. And it's not that far away. It's not that far away from where you live? It's like an hour. That's it? That's it. Hour, hour 15, yeah. From Cary? No, I was in Statesville. 
Oh, okay. No, sorry. I was like, wait a minute. No, <laughs> sorry. We be going to blowing rock. I don't know. <laughs> when you said that, I was like, wait a minute. Something's I'm, off. I'm, we, we, we have things to do here. There's nothing to do in Statesville. So, got in the car. Got, more got, got in the car. Drove up that mountain. The Google, the Google took me up through Hickory and up 321, which I forgot has all those little towns, so it was stop and go traffic. Get up to Blowing Rock. We passed by the entrance to Blowing Rock, and I'm like, you know, we'll go in the town first, and we'll come back and see the Blowing Rock. The Blowing Rock. So we, we we went up into the town, and girl, there was a Christmas festival going on. Oh, I nice. had to, there was nowhere to park. I had to turn the hell around and just go to the Blowing Rock. We have, we actually had some friends, well, not, they're not friends, but some former classmates that were at that same festival because I saw pictures on Facebook. I think they were at the parade, which was the next day. Oh, there was okay, a festival one day and a parade the next day. Oh, well, that's you know us Southerners. We like it. We like a reason to get out of our car and look at some crafts out outside. Oh man, and those crafts are probably the same exact crafts that were there when we were children. It's, there, there are a bunch of acrylic hearts that have been painted with little polka dots everywhere. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. I wish you were, but you're not. <laughs> some baskets. There's always every time oh so, some hand painted little paintings that have inspirational quotes on them Inspir uh, inspirational quotes just mean quotes from the bible that's really all that's yes. all you mean yes <laughs> um so then we, we well so then we we hightailed it as fast as we could in all this traffic out of blowing rock and then went to the blowing rock uh -huh. spent seven dollars to go see the blowing rock now, as a child, I have not been up there since I was like six. <laughs> I remember it being so much longer of a hike to get to the Blowing Rock. You well, opened the had, you opened the you door. The Blowing back Rock then. is right there. You had shorter legs back then. I, I, they weren't that short. Like I, the, the Blowing Rock is literally right after you open the door from the building. Okay. Like, okay. Do, do you do you remember the story of Blowing Rock, the racist story? It's the, isn't it the one where like the person jumped off the rock to sacrifice themselves and then the rock blew them back up? It's into or their so, lover's arms. Right. Yeah. 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 And they were both Native American because of course they were. There's this lovely. Everybody, everybody was Native American in our, all of our myths. Th there's a lovely picture of the, like it's in silhouette of the, of a, I guess brave because he's got a feather coming from his back of his head and he's grabbing the princess girl who's got one of those long tunic dresses anyway the worst part of blowing rock let me get to the worst part hold on and then we'll get started with this episode dear listeners i know it's about 15 minutes in but i have to tell <laughs> you like what's happening right now? That, so so there was a nature trail to go down into the gorge okay quarter mile nature trail to go down into the gorge i walked down it's gotta be 70 steps and then the trail does not make it all the way down to the gorge. No, no, no. It makes it onto a platform with trees blocking the view overlooking the gorge. Wait, and I'm what? Like, yeah, and I was like, and it's windy because it's blowing rock, right? That's like, right. like there's wind <laughs> on the side of this damn cliff. I'm cold. Mr. Mr. Mims has had enough. I've had enough. <laughs> He's had enough. <laughs> I love it. He's had enough. So I can see that too. I can see that phase. I can see it. <laughs> I was cold. I did not bring my my cold jacket. I just brought a hoodie because I was like, we're gonna be inside of a nice restaurant or something, drink some hot chocolate. It's gonna be cute. So let's get into this episode. This is season two, episode seven. One of the most cut and dry episodes we've ever had. This is like the most linear plot episode yep. we've had so far. Can I say the name, please? Go right this ahead. is season two, episode seven, Heart Attacks. I'm Julia Sugarbakers. I, I, I'm Julia Sugarbakers. I, I, I'm Julia Sugarbakers. I'm, I'm Julia Sugarbakers, and that's Marjorie. 
just so you will know and your children will someday know is the night the lights went out in georgia the lights went out the lights went out the lights went out the lights went out and that is the night the lights went out in georgia Well, now you do. Do 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 be adjust the microphone a little bit. There Aww. we go. Mm-hmm. Getting close to your screen. So we're at Sugar Bakers. And Charlene is reading a tabloid. A girl gave birth to her identical twin and she took it to prom. Yes. yes. And Charlene's big big deal with this. They don't have prom in November. Oh, yeah, That's, I mean that was the most logical too. I was like, I was, I was right there with Charlene. I was like, yeah, no, that makes complete sense. We learned that Julia enjoys these things, <laughs> and then like Charlene goes in the story of how everybody likes them because she was there, and there was the heartbreak of Bridget Nielsen and Stallone on their honeymoon night. Mame, did you look this up? Because I did not. About about the two of them, or this, yeah, yeah. This, like, what, what happened on their honeymoon honeymoon night to make it the? Tragic? Oh, I didn't look at. I mean, I, I I just assumed it was just because they were both tragic people. Okay, <laughs> so I, I, just, I know I know nothing about. It was interesting though hearing um, Julia call her Brigitte Stallone because yeah. I don't think anyone ever referred to her as that. No. Even when we were kids back then, that was never something that anybody no. called her. So that was really no. very. It was a weird moment. Yep. So. Uh, Julia's like, I don't even know who Brigitte Stallone is. And Suzanne's just like, well, people have no sense of history anymore. You know, back then they were arguing about this, not the Confederate flags. I know, I know, I know, I know. Like the, the things that people were upset about <laughs> when we think about perspective. <laughs> well, Helen Jane is dead, by the way. Oh, dang it, not Helen Jane. Did they actually get her project done before she No, died? they didn't. It's the first time that somebody's died halfway through. Ugh, that stinks. <laughs> Mark Twain's here! Yay! Reese is here! Yay! And there is, like, some applause that feels There's very the forced audience, by the audience. The audience is into it. They're like, yes! They're like, hello, <laughs> Brooke! Do we don't even remember you! Do you hear Mark Twain! <laughs> <laughs> I, would love, I would love if this was, like... It's like a concert where people shout Freebird. I would love if people just randomly shouted Mark Twain during the Mark episode. Twain! Mark <laughs> Twain! <laughs> oh, God. So this reminds me. We we were watching, because you know you watch really bad television yeah. uh, over Thanksgiving. We were watching... Um, d- do you ever watch the YouTube thing where Trixie and Katya... Um, review things so you don't have to on Netflix. Yes, yes, yes. Did you see the one that was because tr- Trixie's Trixie had her appendix taken out, right? So it's Katya and Jinx reviewing t- the second Tiger King. No, I haven't seen that one. Girl, girl, <laughs> there is one. There's one word that I'm going to just say at you, and I want you to watch it soon after this. It's gutter slut. <laughs> what? There is a scene. So, so the Tiger King people are like, they went to the Trump rally on the sixth okay. to unfurl a banner that said "Free the Tiger King." Okay, he's innocent or something like that. There are some insurrectionists who are going up to these people and saying, "We are trying to save the America. Why are you doing this? This is not blah 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 blah." And the woman, the insurrectionist. Calls the man there a gutter slut. Wow. A gutter slut. I mean, that's a pretty legit insult. It's true. 
Speaking of gutter sluts. Yeah. Speaking of gutter sluts. I love talking about them. Did you know you could support us on Patreon? What? <laughs> we have a Patreon. And I would like to thank somebody who is not a gutter slut. We're the gutter sluts. The here. opposite of a gutter slut, actually. The opposite. They donated money to us. Actual cash money to us. Cash money in the amount of like $69.69. I feel like they were being cheeky. I, I, I'm not sure, but I think so. So from what from what Mame tells me, they are a semi professional whistler. Yes, yes, semi professional, and that they have a day job still. Oh well, good for them. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that came out far more me than what I thought it would. I know. I don't think you meant it to sound that bad. I did not. It should have been more supportive. Well, good for them. <laughs> Because I don't know if whistling really pays the bills. Is what I, was... I don't think I don't think it does actually. We haven't really ever talked about their business model, but I don't think it does. But but what could pay their bills? They are also on TikTok as Geek Tomb, G E E K T O M B, Geek Tomb, like the Tomb of Geeks. So thank you, Miss B, you Tomb of Geeks, for supporting us. And making it possible for us to do this, your donation is well loved. Yes. Go f go support Geek Tomb and watch a lot of awesome whistling videos. And support us. You can support us at Baking Sugar on Patreon. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, that's right. We have a Patreon. At, at Baking Sugar. <laughs> it's a Patreon. Say it a few more times, maybe they'll sink in. We got a Patreon. <laughs> I, I, you know, I can't say that I, I, we, we haven't received any, any money now, so I can't say that. That's right. But I can say that we've received one donation now. We've gotten an actual donation. We have. This is a momentous day. Mm-hmm. Should we play um something? Some, um. <laughs> Sing, sing a little ditty about Jack and Diane. Do you ever know that you're my hero? Stop. <laughs> That's enough. Because otherwise it'll be copywritten. <laughs> oh. And now let's all so, sing them. They're always playing in my head now. <laughs> Um, hold on, I've, I've, I've got, I can get, I can get another song stuck in there. Um, oh God, not the one that, not Heart of Glass, what's the other Blondie song? The other big one at the time. The tide is high? No, 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 keep going. Rapture? No, not Rapture. So, at my telephone? <laughs> sooner or later, um. One way or another, I'm gonna. Get that's it. Me. That's it. That song. That song sticks with you. One way or another. That's so I'm random. Gonna you. I'm gonna get you, get you, get you, get you one okay. day. Okay. This is day. really. This is so weird because okay, so I don't typically do Blondie songs when I host karaoke, uh -huh. and it's so random that you just said that because I just did that song. It's it's the most it's the most earwormy Blondie song. But, like, in three months of me hosting that show, I've never done a Blondie song, and this was the first time I did it's it. because the only time you can actually understand what Debbie Harry's saying. No, it's because my voice was shot, and I thought that was one of the only songs I could get through. No, no, not not you. That's not why you could sing any of them. I'm talking about that's why it's the most earwormy. Because how are you going to go... Yeah, I don't even think it's that earwormy, personally. What? I don't even think it's that earwormy. I, I think that Rapture is more earwormy than that one. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry for my my hot take. Incorrect here. opinion, <laughs> Mame. Incorrect opinion. It says right here in the notes. It says right here in the notes that Reese doesn't want to take Sheffield out. Um, Sheffield, who is a law school flirt friend, who does nothing but flirt with Julia. That's right. What a jerk. And and um, he like Suzanne's met him and. He mentioned that he was gonna, uh, like, was with both of the Doublemint twins, yes. and Very she true. has ridden on a float with the vice president. She was not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> ah! 
I love it so much. So which vice president would that have been? That would have been either Ford or... It would have been been in the 70s. Yeah, I wonder who it would have been. um, I don't really know that much about vice presidents, unfortunately. It would have probably been Ford or whoever Ford's was after Nixon. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. So we learned that we learned that Reese has 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 Hattie Mae as his cook, which I put cringe beside. <laughs> so, dear listeners, I want I want to explain something to you that ha- that continued to go on in the South well after well, Jim Crow entered ended well after. entered ended. So a lot of older families still kept their cooks in indentured servitude. Sometimes, sometimes. I mean, they definitely, they definitely weren't paid the same as a professional in-home chef. No, no, they were not. Um, but kept them around for a long time. Like, well, they're like family. One of my friends had a he he, he called her mammy. Like, called her mammy. Um, up I just s- let me just pause for just a quick second. Let's be very clear, dear listeners. Uh. <laughs> Mims and I are just in our early forties. Yes, and we have we ourselves have been connected to people that still use terms like "mammy." Right, right. Like he, it, it was his grandmother's um, servant or grand aunt, I guess, grand aunt servant. Um, but servant, God, that even sounds that feels uncomfortable coming out of my mouth. Um. But I, I think her name was Hattie, too. Or that's what they called her. God well, knows. It's like, it's like I said. If you were being paid the same as a in-home professional chef as they are now, then that would be different. But they I, weren't. I will say I will say this, this lady was given room, board, and after they died was taken care of for the rest of her life. That's lovely. That that is yeah. lovely. Like 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 still called her mammy, but like that's nice. That, they paid they that. paid for everything for her for the rest of her life. So there there was mm. that. I will not. That's nice stuff. Yes yes. He he was he was a prominent doctor in Statesville. Yeah. Anyway, so we have Hattie Mays, Reese's cook, mm-hmm. and Reese hands Julia this yes. letter. I'm so excited. With this huge gold seal on it, yes. Chekhov's letter, and oh. and they have instructions to read it at Helen Jane's funeral, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but only the sugar sugar baker women because they came and supported her during her death. Julia was their first choice, and no, Suzanne, there was not a second choice. <laughs> runner up. <laughs> Can you tell me if there was a runner up? <laughs> God. <laughs> that line is so perfect. Suzanne will always be Suzanne. Oh man. <laughs> so now, now we're at Reese's uh-huh. with this grand staircase. Like yeah. I want to come sliding down that thing. I, what? My fat ass sliding down a staircase. You gonna say something? You gonna say something, girl? You gonna say something? You gonna say something? You can slide down. You can slide down Reese's banister anytime. I didn't say banister. I said staircase. I want to go down it every step by step. Oh, you want to slide down the actual (laughs) staircase? (laughs) (laughs) I I don't know about you, but I loved doing that as a kid. I did down a carpeted staircase. I love sliding down a staircase. Bony butt. I I have I have no butt, but I still like doing it. So, so we learned that Sheffield. <laughs> oh. Uh huh. We learned that Sheffield <laughs> uh, gave advice against Ishtar. Yes, Ishtar joke <laughs> because we needed that. Because that's back then, boy, there actually were in a lot of different sitcoms. That were yes. Uh, Warren Beatty uh, is getting a used look. Suzanne thinks he's been with too many women. <laughs> and Charlene posed the question of where's Al Pacino? Yes. I, 
I, I, which I, I mean, short shortly after this, I mean, designing women may have been the thing that got his career back on track because shortly after this, that's when uh, Scent of a Woman uh, was like about two or two or three years later. God, that is not a good movie. That won him an Oscar. That doesn't make. Iron Lady won uh, Meryl Streep an Oscar. Are you telling me that's gold? I'm not saying anything. Any, okay. I, I'm okay. not allowed. According to the bylaws, I can't say anything negative about Meryl Streep's, and you already know that. So I'm not saying anything negative about Meryl Streep. Okay. I'm not. I'm not saying anything. I'm saying. Be, I'm saying negative things about that movie. I don't know. They might be watching. You might never know. Who? Who might be watching? Julio. <laughs> Do you ever see speaking of Meryl Streep? <laughs> did you ever see? The Red Nose uh, thing. Um, so Red Nose Day. Red Nose is is the thing yeah, that the yeah. Brits do comedy. Comic, comic relief. Yeah. Uh huh. Comic relief. Did you ever see the French and Saunders version of Mamma Mia? I don't know. I'm not sure if where, I did or not. Where it's like Alan Carr, I believe, is the gay one. I've definitely not seen it. And like Miranda Hart is the director. What? And she's like, she's like, I want to get you all in the same frame and just make sure you are shortest to tallest and that's good enough. And like, it is. And, and the Swede is played by a turnip. I got a turnip. <laughs> I'll find it to you and send it to you later. It is, <laughs> it's about seven minutes of pure. But but Jennifer Saunders has the Meryl Streep like weird movements yeah. in that movie down <laughs> pat like it's perfect. I'm so I oh man, Mamma Mia, uh, that deserves a rewatch I think soon because that movie is bizarre. So they they talk about some things like Sheffield's like braggadociously saying some things. We learn that Julia doesn't know who Prince is. Um, it was like what? And Reese is like, "Don't believe y'all don't believe any Sheffield's fake stories, do you?" <laughs> yes, about having the, the yacht and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Ride <laughs> riding to UCLA in a in a helicopter and yes. We also, so Reese offers him a nice toddy for after dinner, mm -hmm. you know, a nice digestive. A nice, yeah. We, we, we learned that Sheffield is is a health nut. Yes, he has stopped drinking alcohol and and he likes to take vitamins and yeah. all of that. And yeah. drink a nice smoothie before bed. Yeah, yeah. Could you yeah. imagine getting all those seeds in your teeth before bed and then having to floss all that shit out? My God. I don't know. I think most gays are used to having seeds in their teeth before bed. <laughs> Mama Mame, I don't know what your what your daughter has been doing, but that is a daytime activity. <laughs> when you are married, that is a daytime activity because you just want to get to sleep when it's time to go to bed. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to, I'm like, just picking up low hanging fruit today. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just doing it. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. I've taught you well. <laughs> um, where am I at in this? They're about to do the thing. Oh, yeah, so, so, <laughs> Chef is, like, going over Julia going, I don't know why he, 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 he you, you go for him. He doesn't deserve you. And Reese says something, the sweetest thing. Nobody deserves Julia, so I thought I might as well. That's right. Oh, it's so sweet. And then Sheffield is like, hey, between Reese and me, which one of us held up better? Ha 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 ha. Which, just so, just so our dear listeners, in case you don't do the research level that we do, um, the, we do a little bit of research. We, we, um, we, we do a little bit. Twice. Yeah, we do a little bit of research. Yeah. Um, I think it's funny that uh, they even set up the, the set up this premise here uh -huh. because these two actors are 15 years in difference in age. Are they? Yes. Oh my god. And I was like, wait, what? 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 
That doesn't even make sense. Also, let me just throw this out there. They both went to Yale Law, right? Isn't that what they say? Which means they're Democrats, because a lot of Yale lawyers are Democrats. That's not surprising. But for Reese, who is obviously a rich Southern... Wouldn't it not have made more sense for him to either go to Duke or Emory? Well, maybe he went to Duke for his pre and then then went to... (laughs) Whatever. So they arm wrestle! They do, and oh boy. <laughs> Suzanne, like they're doing it. Julia's like, y'all need to stop. Y'all need to stop. Stop, man. Oh, no, man, stop. Please stop, y'all. And Suzanne's like, there's nothing wrong with letting men fight over you. And then Reese has a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> and boy, was it a heart attack. Oh, man. Beating on the chest. What? It's so Sheffield is still holding on to his I hand. know. It's like, you need to call an ambulance. He's having a heart attack. Well, but I can't give up this fight. Yeah. <laughs> like, and Reese is like, he's like beating his literal chest and he's still holding his hand. I'm like, uh, I think you guys are done. So, so we're, we're at the hospital now. The intensive care unit, which has a waiting room in front of it. Like, no intensive care unit I've ever seen. It's just a door with some shitty chairs. I've seen that with a waiting room. And I've seen that waiting room, just yeah. not in front of the intensive care unit. No, I haven't either. But I mean, and, you know, but things are different there. I believe they are at a community hospital in Atlanta, Georgia. Which makes no sense at all. They would go to like Emory and Des Moines. <laughs> like, yeah, whatever say, whatever um, the Duke slash Wake Forest yeah. slash yeah. UNC slash... Etc. 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 No, they would not be. So I would like to give a shout out to Suzanne Sugarbaker right now. Oh my lord! Who right? has it all under control? It was like a different actress was playing this role. <laughs> yeah, she's she's got the children on their way down. She's got uh, Anthony ready to uh, open up the store. Yep. She's called everybody. She's got it under control. Julie, on the other hand, has a breakdown. It says it right here. <laughs> right she has there. a breakdown. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> so Suzanne stops her and is basically like, look, I told the doctor that if it doesn't seem like Reese is going to make it to come out and get you. Has the doctor come out and gotten you yet? No. Then sit down. Let's calm down. Put your head on my shoulder and it'll all be okay. And, good sister. and Charlene just looks at her and goes, my God, one crisis, and she's Scarlett O'Hara. Because that's how Southern women are. That's how Southern Charlene. women are. <laughs> that's how we all are. <laughs> yes, I included two of us. Yeah, oh, well, Southern women and Southern gays, we yes. will... <laughs> ah, we, the house will be burning behind us. We'll, we'll be stone-faced. With Hattie Mae behind us somehow. <laughs> and my queezing art. <laughs> not, 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 not Hattie Mae, you crock pot girl. <laughs> Don't leave me in the pot, please. <laughs> How will I live? Get the air fryer, Hattie Mae. Get the air fryer. No, no, not that one. Get the nice one. <laughs> The basket. <laughs> Hattie Bay just keeps running back and forth into a burning house. <laughs> Crap, electrical appliances. My steamer, Hattie Bay. This Dude, dress is steam itself. Get my pearls, Hattie Bay. The jewelry box. The ju- no, no, the gold jewelry box, not the silver. <laughs> just one more time. Just go pick it one more time. <laughs> oh my god so Suzanne says that we, we skip ahead a little bit Suzanne says Reese is going to be okay because she made a deal with God she did she did it was noble of her yes if Reese lives God can take three of her boyfriends oh that's that's yeah. monstrous <laughs> Reese is okay Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I thought that Hell Holbrook would not be getting an extended contract. <laughs> Suzanne better call. Charlene says Suzanne better call three of her boyfriends. 
Yeah, because the good Lord is coming for him. Oh, mercy. So now we're back at Sugar Bakers. Yes, we're still not done yet with the story. No, no, no. We've got we've got about page and a half left to go, y'all. Page and a, I don't know if you know what that means, but that's at least seven minutes. <laughs> I mean, there's not that huge. I mean, there's some stuff happening, but yeah. oh yeah. So so so, they ha- they have to be at the funeral in thirty minutes. They completely forgot about the they funeral. About the memorial service altogether. Which, I mean, makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. They're going to flip a coin. It's going to be Mary Jo and Charlene. They're going to flip a coin to see who is going to read it. So, so we, we, we do a little, we do a little thing at Reese's bedside and Julia's like, I, I, doesn't say I love you, but says everything except for that. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So now we're at the funeral, and Mary Jo was chosen to read the read. letter. And she's really stressed out about it because, well, you know. She be. <laughs> so she's up there. She's got the envelope. She opens up the envelope, and she said, the winner is. And yeah. Charlene, Charlene does a little chuckle and then holds it back. <laughs> so to Carl sitting there all meekly just yeah. like a little uh, old man uh, 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 did he put his hand up when she said carl yeah he said me that's me yeah <laughs> well we find out that he's an ass like it goes through a laundry list of things never complimenting Ugh. her <laughs> never kissing her hello or insulting goodbye, her she wrote too. insulting her having an affair with Vivian Blanchard who passes out in the, and, and Annie Pods doesn't miss me and goes, oh, I guess she's here too. Um, and then yeah. find out they had an affair in Biloxi on the night of her hysterectomy. <laughs> Mary Jo is done, puts the letter down and says, I think I forgot to put a corner in to the machine. Oh my God! Uh, <laughs> I oh man, I I had I I started to come back to me the first time I, I rewatched it. It started to come back to me just before she opened that envelope because I heard her in my head say, "The winner is." Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, I do remember." Uh huh. Uh huh. So now we're at Reese's again. Uh-huh. Julia is worrying the hell out of Reese. She is, but she's going to go out with Sheffield because, you know, she, she wants him to be like, he's a friend and like Reese doesn't, I don't, I don't really understand Julia's motivation. I was, I, to me, I, I felt like, so on, on one hand, I kind of understood because it was Julia trying to do the whole Southern hospitality thing because Sheffield had been in town for weeks now and, and, you know, Reese hasn't been able to do anything. Yeah. Um, so I totally got it. But at the same time, <laughs> it's kind of like, um, haven't we well established now that this guy keeps trying to mm-hmm. chase, you, chase you? Like a couple of times it's been said it pretty blatantly. Reese says the bottom half of me is still operational, which he means did. they have not had the boomson in a while. And Suzanne was sitting right there with uh-huh. the ear shot. And she says, Julie's like, not in front of Suzanne. Where Reese says, Suzanne knows all about the bomb half of men. <laughs> Suzanne says, I don't like to brag. And then Reese says, yes, yeah. you do. That was my favorite three uh-huh. lines of this show so far. And she's just got this catty look on yes. her face while he's saying it. Those three lines were my uh-huh. favorite three lines so far in this show. Like, yes. it felt the most, I mean, that's the most natural, like, humorous moment mm-hmm. that I think this show has had so far. Yep. Now we're back at Sugar Bakers yes. with the lights off. Yeah. Julia and Sheffield walk in. In the dark. And Sheffield kisses her. That bastard. Julia doesn't believe that Sheffield would ever do that. She, apparently she hasn't been living the life that we've been watching. I know, right? And they go through some sort of spill and we find out Julia actually really loves Reese and beyond. Yeah, that. whatever. I didn't know what that meant. So now we're back at Reese's. Mm-hmm. Reese is sitting there reading something. 
Julia walks in in a red trench coat <laughs> and then like takes it off and is wearing a Meemaw <laughs> nightgown. <laughs> All black. Ah, it was so great because remember at that point in the 80s, that was like such a cliche. Uh-huh. But, then, but then she came out with what she was yep. wearing. And I was like, oh, okay. Yup. So Julia gave Hattie Mae the afternoon off. And she's wearing her slutty heels. Why did she have to have so? Why did she have the negligee and the wrap over the negligee and the coat? Why did she have all three pieces? I don't, I don't know. Like, I just kept staring, like, why? Why did you do I that? I don't have answers for you, ma'am. I don't have answers for you. <laughs> but we're at the end of the episode. Yes, we are. That's basically it. <laughs> do do. Julia and Reese go into bound, Bone Town. Do, 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 do. Population 2. Well, Mame, did you find yourself in Miss Georgia World? I di- I, there was an outfit that stuck out uh, for me. I don't know if I would say it's like the most beautiful outfit, but I thought it was really interesting. Um, it was that interesting like tan and black pinstripe thing that Julia was wearing. Yes. I thought yes. that was so interesting with the with the with the like flower brooch yeah. and it looked somewhere in between like a coat yeah. and and a dress. Yeah, I loved it. That was mine too. It, yeah, it was like, just that's such a little eighties little. That's like such a nice little moment of the eighties. Yeah, you know? like it it was it was really pretty. Like it yeah, it it's it. A, it surprised me. I was like, oh yeah. oh, I I really thought you were gonna pick that negligee. I really was waiting for you to pick that Meemaw negligee. It's not even I mean, a negligee. If I, if, I had to give it to, if, I, if I had to give it to an alternative, it would be Julia in the red trench coat oh, yeah. before she takes off the, the, the trench coat. You know, because... I wonder how many takes it took to get that nightgown up inside that trench, because I think it was longer than the trench coat. It was. So, so to get it up so in weird. that trench coat, so weird. I don't costuming understand. had to be real annoyed with that. I don't understand. It was just weird. <laughs> So, Mame, did you enjoy this episode? I did enjoy this episode. I mean, it's a, it was a very, like, you know, it was a very uh, world-building episode, right? Like, we gave, got a little bit more insight into, like, a side character's life with Reese and his job and stuff like that. And finally, we let Suzanne be something beyond just the shallow person that she always is. Um, so yeah, so this was, uh, this one leans more into the like category for me. How about you? I agree. I really enjoyed this episode. I enjoyed it watching it. I enjoyed it, uh, on the rewatch and dear listeners, I definitely enjoyed it better than the last week's episode (laughs) where I had a major problem with it. Uh, 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 my mouth looks really weird at this angle. Uh, uh, uh. God, well, yeah, yeah, that that happened. That that definitely, that. definitely, definitely. What major? It's very major. I, please stop. Very major. Please, for goodness' sake, stop. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Uh, you know, I thought we would get some feedback or some ratings or something on that episode, but we didn't get anything. So, dear listeners, if you like this podcast, yes. like, subscribe. Do you do that for podcasts? Leave us a rating. Like You do subscribe to podcasts. You no, know, I'm liking. I guess you do like them, too. Don't you me? like them, too, if you're on I, Spotify. I, I, that's true. All the, different, all the different ones have different ranking systems. But le- le- leave, us, leave us a review. We love to hear from you. Like, yeah. we do. Positive reviews also help us to show up in front of other people's feeds. So, you know, those oh, would be nice it? as well. Oh, good. Yeah. Let's yeah, that's why that. we that's why people if you're on iTunes especially or if you're on Google Play like leave us a a, a nice review cuz that will help our algorithm uh Ooh, to pop up into more people's stuff. I will say if you Google uh designing women podcast we are the first thing that shows up on Google. Cuz probably cuz there's no other No, there's podcast. like four. What? Yeah. So people thank you for listening our to idea? ours. They oh no, they've idea? already they're already finished. Oh. Yeah. Wait, they did the whole Sarah show? Yeah. They've done all, like, hundreds of episodes and stuff? Yeah, they did that. Oh. They probably did, like, four in a day, something we are never going to do. 
I know. Like, we can barely do one a week, let alone four in a day. <laughs> like, dear listeners, we at least admit that we're constant messes. Like, we we admit that we are sloppy and we are not good at this. We're, we're okay. We're getting better, you know. We're getting better. Like a nice wine or cheese. Cheese, except I think Mame is lactose-sensitive. She's doing something. I don't know what she's doing. I'm looking up the thing. I'm what thing the are thing. you looking up? What you just said to look up. What I, what I tell you to look up? About the podcast. What did I tell you to look up about the podcast? You said to look to see, see that we got ranked at, like, number one or whatever. No, I said that if you Google it, it's the first thing that pops up. I said you don't need oh, to look. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. My God. And it could just be me because I've got my own algorithm and I do this shit. So it could just be that. <laughs> Your own algorithm. My own algorithm. We all have our own algorithm. You know what? That's something that irritates me. Let me tell you something that irritates me and then we'll get to the good, saying goodbye. Oh, boy. You know how people are talking about the vaccines are microchipped? Yes. Do they realize that uh, our phones are microchipped? that Bill Gates already won. Like, he he, he he already won, y'all. We have these. We have these. We, 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 like, like, these are everywhere. These, listen to it. Jeff Bezos knows what the hell you're thinking 24-7. Like, you don't need something poked in you to know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Name, tell them where they can find you. <laughs> yeah, um... <laughs> After, after that um so we are um i'm uh i'm on uh, instagram i'm on instagram where are you i'm on instagram at auntie dot auntie dot ma'am m-a-i-m uh not m-a-m-e like the movie um i'm on facebook at i'm your auntie Mam. one word um if you would like to meet me irl um that means in real life for the old yeah, people real life real life sorry uh people that don't know acronyms um i or am <laughs> i <laughs> i'm down uh i'm down in south florida so if you're ever in miami vacationing every thursday night you can find me hosting amazing colossal karaoke at kill your idol on miami beach where we was singing and doing all crazy kinds of stuff and um and i'll be in drag so you can come and take pictures and have fun with me how about you i am the divine miss mims that bitch um you can find me at divine miss mims on twitter everybody who listens this send me a message on twitter at divine miss mims and just say that bitch to me i love it um you can follow us. We uh, you can follow this podcast on Twitter at Baking Sugar Pod, and you can support us on Patreon, like Miss B did. Geek Tune, send us some money. Send us some money. <laughs> send I can't some believe money. that was just that. <laughs> Man, Jesus. why? Why can't we? You know what? Uh, is Sally Struthers still alive? I wouldn't yes, mind Sally getting... Sally Struthers is still alive! Can we get her to, like, record a little PSA for us for our Patreon? Hold um, on, let me see if I can do a Sally Struthers impersonation. Maybe she's on Hey, video. hey, hey, guys! It's Sally Struthers! <laughs> please! Please! Help me the babe by giving them some money! Thank you! I'm Sally Struthers! <laughs> <laughs> the set, uh, uh, Miss, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Miss Mims, uh, um, the Sesame Street, Sesame Street Studios is on line one. They said that, uh, they detected that you were holding Elmo hostage. Um, I not Elmo, me Sally Struthers. I'll let them know. Okay, thank you. All right. Say goodnight, Mame. Night, Mame. <laughs> night, girl. Night, y'all. Bye.